Over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day. Uh, whoa, that's right. I was, uh, we got a new time, too. It's a beautiful thing. 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get his newsletter, folks. You come over to our website at TFNN, hit Newsletters. You're going to see it in the top right-hand corner. You just hit Subscribe. You can get the newsletter for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And you get it for one year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. And, folks, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So, as Steve says, guess what? You have it 29 days for free. Check it out. It's a great newsletter, folks. You really have to understand. You will understand how Steve looks at the market each and every day. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, you know, I still make that same uh, kind of error each day when I start the uh, show because I'm so used to so used to the canned, you know, open that I have. I'm, I'm with, exactly, yeah. And I, and I remember when I first started the show, a couple of my friends said, you know, I, what they really liked about different shows that they listened to was, you know, the, the, the opening was, was consistent, like in your case, you know, you're reading what some of the four agreements yes. or some of those cards or what have you. You know, so I always, always tried to do that. And now when it, with changing the time frames, you know, just naturally, I'm usually saying one o'clock. Right. But, uh, right. you know, but, but 11. But nice. And, and green, sunny green. Delray Beach. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Which usually it is. Usually, that's you know, right. Usually that's it right. is. So, uh, that's right. Uh, yeah. So it's a beautiful thing. It's been a great summer. I enjoyed this weekend. We had the NFL preseason games going. Yeah. So that was good. Some really great golf. Um, you know, I like the PGA Tour, but watching these uh, uh, junior women, I mean, some of these girls were 13, 14. The one who won is 17. Really? She no, you know, it's so funny. I, when I was listening this morning, I heard you say that to John. Yeah. And I didn't see that. I missed that. On, so that was on TV too, right? Yeah? It was, was it? yeah. Okay. Exactly. So yeah. and it just amazing the uh, the poise yeah. that this 17-year-old uh, girl from Japan uh, had out there. And they're playing just a beautiful golf course. So always fun to watch. And, you know, and I, and I love sports. Right. Um, Right. You know, so so it's good, and then I can kind of consider the stock market. It's a sport as Yo, well. there's no doubt, man. This right. is the ultimate sport. <laughs> it, it is. It is. Yeah. So so speaking of this sport here, the stock market on July 22nd, this first chart that I'm showing, kind of take people through the markets as I see them right now. And on July 22nd, the Nasdaq 100, the NDX 100, generated a sell the D point pattern, Gartley sell. And what that is, folks, that's part of the A to B equals C D cycle. And I've got some blue lines drawn in here so you can see the A to B and then the C to D. Like I've just simply I have an actual tool. I don't have it for this white background chart that draws these patterns. But people can do the same thing at home just to, to be able to identify the A to B point and that they just copy that line. They can move it over to where that C to D. Now, the way that I show one of these patterns completed and has to form, in this case here, with an A to B equals C to the upside, a bearish reversal candle which is what it did on July 22nd. It created that sell the D point when it formed a bearish sash candle where the blue arrow's at. So that's a starter. That top took price right back to what's referred to as the oscillator unchanged line. So during this segment here, I'll refer to it as the OUL, where that red arrow is. And that means that a key level of support held and that the upward momentum remained in place as of that date. If we take a look at what took place on July 28th, this sell the D point pattern was negated. So I've got this blue horizontal line. Yeah. So the resistance level for that candle session right. was that high. And as soon as price closed above that, not, not traded above it, but closed above it, it negated that signal. That said, okay, no longer did the NDX 100 have a sell the D point pattern. On August 9th, the NDX 100, where I've got this blue arrow, Look gap to the downside. Yep. A gap to the upside is bullish. A gap to the downside is bearish. Even though those gaps may or may not be filled at some point in time, we still go with the signal. But when price gapped to the downside, that was actually the next buy point in the NDX 100. All right. This price found support at that green oscillator and change line. On August 11th, the NDX 100 formed another sell the D point pattern out here when it created this bearish engulfing candle. But that failed. The very next second, so the very next session out here. So I want people to be paying attention to the oscillator and change line, the signals that it forms, what typically happens with price uh, coming back to that level out here. And so all the topping signals that we've seen so far have failed. Where are we at today? We're in wave number seven, so part of the Chapman wave, a very small part of the Chapman wave. And in order for this signal to confirm, we have to see a lower high. So the earliest that this signal could firm could uh, confirm up would be to, would be at really tomorrow's close. And should we actually get that topping signal, 
well, the key area to be watching is going to be that oscillator and change line, right. which as of about a half an hour ago was around the 13,284 uh, level out there. So one of the workshops, as you mentioned, folks can subscribe to Mastery Probability. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so they've got it for free for 29 days out there. So one of the workshops that subscribers received is the oscillator and change line, the long, short line that every trader really needs to know. So I, I show people how to uh, generate it. Many people have gone on in their own software and have created it. Another word workshop that subscribers receive, and I referred to those bearish reversal candles, Tom, yes. is uh, the ultimate trading signals, Japanese candlesticks. It's an hour long. So folks are looking to, and th these are great tools to help understand what the market is doing. And I mentioned the A to B equals CD pattern. So folks get access uh, if you subscribe to Mastering Probability, the ultimate reversal patterns out there. And it will step you through, it will take you through that step by step. And understanding those patterns are really going to be helpful in us identifying the next top which seasonally for the NDX 100 says that we're getting really close. So when I put that together, which is your opening, you and I had not talk, you take a look at volume, you take a look at the NDX 100, you take a look at the queues, you've got a target area out there. When we take a look at the seasonality, now this is the seasonality, folks, during midterm election cycles. So you'll see the years up top, they've got the boxes checked with regard to the years that are applying to this. So the NDX 100 typically says we see some type of top here the next week or so. One that should lead us lower into the September, October time frame. If we look at the weekly chart for the NQ, this suggests that a TD9 count top here, we're in bar, we're in week number seven or bar number seven, that suggests that we could get a top between next week and the second week in September. So I've got a pattern here that is lining up with the seasonal cycle. The last major top folks in Apple, so since that's a the heaviest weighted stock inside the index 100. The last major top on a weekly base was a TD9 count top. The last major bottom was a TD9 count. We're now in bar number seven. So again, this is saying that we could see a top or should see a top form uh, by Labor Day, if not next week. And subscribers get access to a workshop that walks them right through the TD9 count uh, pattern that's out there. That's huge, man. Yeah, seriously, it, right. This is the seasonal midterm election chart for the Dow. So this takes us back to 1902. That's the first year that I've got data. Now this is provided to me by the folks at SeasonX out here. Great tools to help you identify seasonal chart patterns out here. And this says that we should see a significant top that likely begins to form next week inside of the Dow. And if we look at this weekly chart for the Dow, we can see that price is right up against or getting close to a horizontal trading range level at 34,152. We've also got these little red descending trend lines. So we're up towards a resistance level as we come into a time period where we should see a seasonal top. This is the S&P 500. It is suggesting the same thing, that between next week and maybe the week after, we should see some type of top form that should take us lower into at least the October time frame. And here's the ES mini chart for its weekly time frame, just really showing what we just took a look at for the NQ, for Apple, and then for the ES mini. And folks, you saw what just Steve went through, right? Those workshops are phenomenal. Come over to the website, hit the newsletter, hit Mastering Probability. Yeah, you just you'll stay busy. You get a great education, and you can't get it anywhere else. I mean, that's the bottom line. It's like not yes. even close, man. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Steve, have a great one, safe one. We look forward to show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Thank great you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.